Hello, this is Lisa for Brilliance, and this video is going to walk you through the process of creating a personalized embroidered softball or baseball. If we break the project down into three steps, first step would be creating the design layout in Embrilliance Essentials. We will have a bit of fun playing in the software, merging designs, and creating shaped lettering. Next up, we dismantle the ball so that we can take the two petals to the embroidery machine and stitch out our customized design. Finally, we bring it all home and restitch the ball up to finish our one-of-a-kind embroidered keepsake. So let's get started. Or shall we say, play ball! The embroidered softball project begins by merging in the design template for the hoop that we will be stitching in. This template collection is from a creative medley and is available in various sizes and formats. We will select and import the 6x10 version into our hoop and rotate the design 90 degrees so that it is easier for us to work with. This design provides us a visual guideline so that we may properly and precisely place our merged designs and shaped lettering. It certainly takes out the guesswork. Select Import Stitch File to select the accent designs you would like to use. They are imported into the center of your hoop so that you can select and move them to where you want them to stitch on the petal. Keep in mind the margin for the hand stitching as well as how the pieces are going to fit back together so that the designs are oriented as you want them to be. The lettering tool in Embrilliance Essentials allows you to create some pretty artistic art lettering objects. All sorts of personal and commemorative information can be added to your softball or baseball with a single line text lettering type. Use any of the built-in or installed BX fonts, such as this Varsity BX font from the Itch to Stitch. Since most BX files come in multiple sizes, Choose the one that fits the closest in size for the best results. There are many quick styles to choose from to create the shaped lettering that you want. This oval quick style can be further adjusted using the sliders for top and bottom to create a very nice oval shaped 2018. We can fit two petals into our single hoop. Use this shortcut button above the object pane to select all of the elements and group them from the edit menu. Now, we can click on any part of this grouping in our display page to select all the items at one time and move them around our hoop. Just one more in Brilliant's time-saving feature. Let's do this again. Merge in another placement design and rotate it 90 degrees. You've got this. Select the lettering tool and it remembers that you last used the single line text option and it knows what font you used. I told you this wasn't going to take long. Type in the name, and for a uniformed look with the quick styles, try using all capital letters. To mimic the bow of the pedal, we can select Bridge Down from the quick styles and adjust the curves for top and bottom using the sliders. Switch out to the larger size Varsity BX for a more impressive presentation on our pedal. Don't we just love BX fonts? So we have a great shape and it's in the exact spot we want it, but wish it was just a bit bigger. Hold down the shift key when you resize your object using one of the handles. This resizes from center out, so you don't have to take extra steps to get back to your perfect layout. Love this power user feature in Essentials. Once you've finished tweaking your layout, select both of these objects and group them. This makes it so easy to move them around the hoop. Next in the lineup are color choices, not only for artistic reasons, but for also time saving at the machine. First up, to choose a color that is already in the design page, use the palette option. This allows you to quickly select a color that is already in use. As an artist, this feature helps you to create a cohesive design style. From the color sorting and combining point of view, using the same thread color in the software will allow the color sort to do its job efficiently. We're in the home stretch now and ready to do a color sort from the utility menu. We choose to open the sorted design into a new view and quickly verify the stitching order by walking through the expanded design in the object pane. 
Everything looks to be in order, so we, we are ready to save this stitch file to our USB and head to the embroidery machine. Here are some basic guidelines to help you dismantle, embroider, and reassemble your softball or baseball. To remove any printing, use 100% acetone found in the nail polish section of your local department store. To help line the two pieces back up after you embroider them, make a few small matching marks on each petal before you remove the lacing. I used a craft knife to cut the laces for removal. A sharp blade eliminates the need for lots of pressure. Please be careful to only cut the laces. Another trick to help with reassembling process is to trace one of the petals while it is still attached to the ball and put matching marks on the petal and the ball. Color number one is stitched on hooped stabilizer. I used a cutaway, but many use a good tearaway or sticky stabilizer. As a double checking measure, I have slid my printed template under the hoop. Looks like we've got a perfect match, so we're good to go. The petals need to be secured to the stabilizer centered in each placement line. Do not iron the petals flat. I use painter's tape in the non-stitching areas to secure the petals in place. If you choose to use pins, be sure that they will not be stitched on or get pulled out by the embroidery foot. I use my usual Schmetz Embroidery 7511 needle to embroider the softballs. If your machine does not trim jump stitches, use sharp curved scissors to trim the jump stitches on top without damaging the ball. I trim the stabilizer very close on the back side so that there would not be any excessive bulk to hinder reassembling the ball. Using tearaway would eliminate this step. Your embroidered softball or baseball is going to be a keepsake and does not need to be restitched for regulation play. Different types of lacing cords have been used and everyone will have a preference from wax cord to DMC embroidery thread. You will need a length of cord approximately 10 times the circumference of your ball. An 11 inch softball takes about 110 inches. It was easier for me to wind the cord 10 times around the ball than to find a ruler. I cut two lengths of my eight weight crochet thread to use together. Using two large upholstery needles with large eyes make it easier to thread the thicker thread. Take your length of cord and thread a needle at each end. Think of this process the same as lacing sneakers. Your needles are the plastic ends of one shoelace. Set the needles aside for a moment and place the petals back onto the ball matching your marks. It is important that the grooves for the lacing are going in the original direction. Use push pins in the holes to help hold the petals into place. Take one needle and run it through two matching holes and pull all the way through. Just like lacing your sneakers, you want the thread laces to be even on each side. Cross your needles so that the needle pointing to the left is on top of the one pointing to the right. This is important. You need to be consistent. Take the needle pointing right and put it through the hole from the bottom up, but don't pull it through. Take the needle pointing left and put it through the left hole from the bottom up. Don't pull it through. Now look at your needles at how they're crossed. They should be left over right. Take both needles and pull them through at the same time and say to yourself, now pull tight. I'm pretty sure that this is the official baseball embroidery mantra, left over right, now pull tight. If you recite this as you lace up the ball and you double check as you're going along, you get into a rhythm and it starts to go quickly. When you get to the end, be sure to finish off the last stitch in the same hole that you started from. To hide the tail, insert the needle into the seam before the last stitch and slide it between the stitches and the solid center for about an inch and then come up again through the seam. Use scissors to clip close and repeat this for the other tail. Do not be intimidated by the stitching process as it does not take long. One of our Brilliance users created a video showing the whole stitching process from start to finish, including how to hide the tails, and it took him about 14 minutes from start to finish. We've included the link along with other resources in the description of this video. We hope that you have enjoyed this video showing you how to create and finish your own embroidered baseball and softball. 
be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.